So welcome, welcome. I am going to be giving a quick year ahead reading for 2024, working with Ascended Master Sarah. So to bring us into sacred space, take a nice deep breath. Feel your body relax. Just let go of any stress or tension. All is well. All is well. All is well. So today I'm going to be using my Sarah Oracle runes. These are runes that I work with that have specific Sarah meanings. Also going to be working with a number of card packs. I have, if you can just see behind me, I've got dozens of packs up there. And I, when I'm doing a reading, I just pick out the one that feels like the best for today. So today I'm working with um, Keepers of the Light. That's Carl Gray. The Mystique of the Magdalene. That's Cheryl Yambrack Rose and what else have I got two more Izzy Ivy I love this one Beyond Lemuria and Alana Fairchild the Lightworker Oracle so let's see so it's the new moon today it's the first moon of the year so it's 11th of January today first moon of the new year so this new moon it's holding keys and information for us for the rest of the year, not just January. It's kind of laying the foundation for the year. So I'm just going to tune to Sarah. You can call Sarah in as well. But she will help you receive insights and understandings that you need to have. She's very, very good for that. Feel yourself drop down a little, coming down into a more gentle and soft space where you're receptive and can receive insights. So the first position on the reading we're going to look at is what we've left behind in last year. And we have this card, Unconditional Love, Move Beyond Fear. And we also have the rune Ken. Now I'm using the Scandinavian names for these runes, so if they're not quite what you're used to, that's, that's why. So in the Sarah Oracle runes, Ken represents the Ascension Fire. And the Ascension Fire is the evolutionary fire of ascension it's what comes along and washes through us to assist us in taking our next step on our journey so let me just tune into what sarah wants to say about this so yeah so she's showing me a vision of there having been a like a generalised fire, cleansing fire, moving through a certain strata of humanity. And a lot of us will have found now that we can move beyond our blocks or that we have moved beyond our blocks or that we're in the process of moving beyond our blocks and the blocks are of course generally caused by fear of one type or another so for many years um, I've been saying and other people have been saying 
God, you know, when is this going to stop? All this clearing, all this cleansing. This is the first time I've really seen a kind of generalised, like, things are shifting. Something is happening now. And that intensity, as far as the shifting and the changing, it does feel like that is going to come down. But perhaps the intensity stays in, in other ways. But we'll we'll look into that. The energy of this year, so this is 2024. We have this beautiful card here. Gracious receptivity. This is Izzy, Izzy Ivy. And we have the rune Raid. Now, in the Sarah Oracle runes, Raid stands for our light body and one way of understanding the light body is that this is how we move through our incarnation and it's a bit like having a car you know you can walk somewhere you can cycle somewhere not not very good in ecological terms this um metaphor but um if you want to go somewhere a little bit more quickly you get in a car you're also protected in a car you're protected from the environment you're protected from rain from things hitting you and so on sarah has quite a lot to do with our light body she is quite involved in upgrading our light body she is an ascended master for the new age she is part of the Sophia Christ Rose lineage. That lineage holds blueprints and she holds blueprints. And so she's very, very useful to work with when it comes to upgrading your energy um, light body. Um, and from time to time, I do um, Sarah activations, which you can find on my online school where she upgrades certain um, chakras. Let me just tune in and ask what the specific message is. <sighs> yeah, so this is this is tuning in to a image that I got on New Year's Eve as I was falling asleep on New Year's Eve Sarah's energy appeared to me in my mind's eye and I see Yeshua the Magdalene and Sarah as colours when they're with me and Sarah has always appeared as an emerald green now emerald has quite a lot of yellow in it and that really for me represents the divine masculine and Sarah holds the divine masculine and the divine feminine in oneness she's the expression of the sacred marriage but on New Year's Eve as I was falling asleep I saw this apple green so it's more of a like a gentle white green um, and I've been writing about it and one of the things that I've said in the posts that I've written is it has this quality of receptivity and dreaminess and softness and very, very divine feminine. Um, a bit like, you know, like if you imagine that you're daydreaming and you're having all these beautiful dreams and then they start to happen. <laughs> kind of got that, it's kind of that energy that gets you on your way to things that you're going to make happen. And so... That's part of the energy of this year. The other part is we need to keep working with our light body. And some people like to do that very directly. They like to do um, like one of the classes, um, the five months training that I teach for the Blue Rose. We work with Melchizedek and we create like a Blue Rose. Um, oh. My brain's gone a bit for the right word, but 
where you have two pyramids that sit on top of each other. I can't think what it is right now. Blame my hormones for that one. Um, and that really strengthens the light body. But also doing anything that's good for you strengthens your light body. Meditating, eating the right food for you, taking good care of yourself, going for walks, getting enough fresh air, chanting, you know, any any kind of spiritual activity will strengthen your light body because you're always pulling in higher, finer particles of light when you do these things, having healing. I mean, you know, we could just sort of endlessly come up with things that will do that. Um, but yeah, so the suggestion is here. It's really important to keep focusing on that and start to dream your dreams. Journal them, draw them. Not so much like, I've got to make this happen. It's not that kind of energy. It's the, the more where you start by just even letting yourself dream. The soft things, the silly things, the small things, the big things, just there's a gentleness to it and a playfulness as well. And just having fun with it. And just letting it be that, just letting it be quite simple, not trying to turn it into some big manifestation, I'm going to make this happen sort of energy. <laughs> this year it's about that, just the soft, the gentle, the sowing of the seeds. <clears throat> so we move on to the next card, in the next position in the spread. How to get the most out of this energy. So how can we, like go about doing this well this is quite interesting um we have this rune here this is a lesser known rune i think it's called gar and in the sarah um rune oracle it holds the energy of protection powerful protection so think archangel michael think king arthur and the knights of the round table think durga or um chamundaye who she's a goddess who slays demons and chops their head off or um odin think these sort of powerful sort of protection deities that work for the highest good so getting this image of so here we are dreaming the dream it's all very divine feminine and gentle and then it's really really important that we call in powerful protection and i would do this every day i would get up in the morning and make this part of your daily routine and call on whoever it is that you work with that you feel is like your kind of your your protector and then the card that i have and this is from this is from cheryl's magdalene pack this is a card about isis and osiris queen of the sun nothing is lost that cannot be found Now that's really interesting. So let me just tune in. So through our soul journeys, and especially if we just focus on the last couple of thousand years, there has been a lot of struggle with being a spiritual worker. And for those of us who are healers, witches, psychics, 
so on and so forth, priests, priestesses, whatever kind of spiritual work you do, it's not been an easy time and that means that there's been quite a lot of soul loss. So bits of us have been scattered around all over the place. I want to say even all, all over the cosmos. So 2024, and I know like we've been doing this work for years, right? Some of us, some of us older ones perhaps. <laughs> But 2024 feels like it's just going to be a really big collective, like bringing back of that part of humanity that has been cut away for so long. And there's going to be like a mass integration almost of a lot of our spiritual, magical, psychical skills. Um, And we're really going to be like finding this again in a really in a really beautiful way. 